All right. Hello, everybody. We've got Mr. Apollo here welcoming everybody. I hope you guys are having um, a fantastic morning, evening or afternoon, depending on where you're watching me. And uh, really beautiful messages coming through today for the supernova special topic, um, which I actually had to really work to try to make everything concise because <laughs> there's so much that came through in dreams and just researching that totem that uh, we're going to have a busy day today. So uh, welcome everyone. This is a collective reading, which means that everybody's welcome. It's a seven day forecast, which is going to basically help you navigate everything that's coming through. As with all of my readings, I begin with channeled messages and um, combination today of the totem that you chose and also things that came through dreams and um, through meditation. So let's get started, folks. Welcome, everybody. Everyone's welcome today. And again, the special topic is going to help you move into change. Um, it basically is recalibrate, rearrange and rebirth all the things that happen with a supernova. All right, let's begin. So um, the interesting thing when I was doing my research on supernovas is at their core, it's basically, I mean, a star, it's a balancing act anyway. There's a lot of elements. There's a lot of gravity. It sticks around for a long time, but eventually it runs out of fuel. And what happens at that moment where it runs out of fuel is there's a collapse and a supernova ensues. There's a lot of different things that can happen depending on the size or mass of the star. Certain stars don't go supernova. Ours won't. It's just going to become a red giant and like lose its outer layers. And then there'll be like a little white core left behind. Um, but massive stars, five times or more massive than our own star, end up exploding in a really big way. Um, and at the end of the day, it boils down to making sure that you have enough energy to last. That's what the whole supernova thing is about today. So you can avoid that tower moment or that supernova by basically having the six of pentacles here, making sure that you're paying attention to long term goals and um, and basically that's key here. Also, the gravity or pressure of a situation. How much energy do you want to put into reacting or focusing on um, what people say, what people feel, etc. So those are two things that I got already from that pressure test and resource management. Um, it's unavoidable. So again, the moment that the, the star runs out of fuel, it's, its history is written. It's going to do something else. The death card in tarot is for the most part, unavoidable. When you look at the illustration there, there's a reason that we see a child, a mother, a king, and a religious figure. Uh, change is indiscriminate. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter how much money you make, how powerful you are, how famous you are, whatever, or how not famous you are. It's basically change or death or transformation. It's a universal part of our existence throughout our lifetimes. Um, and some changes do not require us to have a supernova or leave our body. Some things are just subtle. It's like, I'm done with this and I'm going to start that. So we're going to look at big changes, small changes and avoidable things that can help us from like Mount, Mount St. Helens blowing our top. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at all of those things in the reading today. I think the key thing here, because we're looking at the indiscriminate and unavoidable aspect of certain changes is to lean into it, be an agent of change. Uh, so focus on recalibrating, rearranging and rebirthing, which is why I put those three together. Stepping into the now. So again, before I knew what the special topic was, as I was sleeping, uh, I saw an Egyptian representation of two of the many types. They had like, I don't know if it was like six or eight different elements of the soul, but most of us have heard of the Ba and the Ka, which are basically um, like the vital essence of personality. But basically, I saw these two essences um, separated. I, I didn't even see the body. I was just looking at the essences and it was around a new situation. Like actually it was out in a parking lot. It made to me whenever I see um, cars, boats or like a uh, highway, it's a representation of a crossroads. That's how spirit will talk to me. So this was a waiting place before you got on the highway. So it's kind of like, are you ready um, to get in the car and go? And I saw a younger version of a person and an older version, the older future version, looking at them saying, let's do this. And they had to combine. Um, so, by the way, one of the things that can cause a supernova sometimes is if a, a nearby star kind of goes into another star or a white dwarf or something like that. There's a lot of different things that can happen. So sometimes the meeting of two people can create this combustive moment. So it can be good. This could be the meeting of a past soul connection. Um, but either way, you're at this nexus of change. 
stepping into the new you, which is why we chose the fool here. And this week is about taking the leap, um, even if it's just in your head or energetically, because by the way, a supernova creates shock waves. So what I was looking at was a future shock wave and it's just like prepare for the change. Okay. So we'll be looking at that as we go into future facing cards to try to help you. So there isn't as much of a shock wave. And then in dreams, I also got this feeling of just, um, floating in the water. Like I could feel the water around my ears. I was just looking up. It felt really nice actually. Cause when you're in the water, your own weight is lightened. We're talking about gravity and weight and all of this, everything felt better. So as we move through the different elements of change, it gets easier once you've made the decision and then it's easy sailing, which is why we have the six of swords here. Final thing in dreams was a conch shell that I saw. Um, and I had to look it up. It's technically like a sea snail. I was like, oh, okay. So we've got the nine of pentacles. So, uh, so it's basically slow, steady, sustainable growth change and movement. Uh, so we don't have to do massive changes uh, overnight, but there may be the epiphanies. For some of us, the supernova is just the light bulb, the aha, and then you start taking slow, strategized, and sustainable steps moving forward. That's a lot of S's. Um, so <laughs> that's kind of what I'm getting here. I do feel like whatever changes are about to um, come through, it's good. It's for the best. You guys wouldn't have chosen this topic otherwise. Okay, so let's get into the seven day portion of this forecast. This is going to help you more tact. Well, yeah, it is a very um, sort of uh, grounded energy to help you look at what's ahead. So let's go ahead, turn the camera down and see what's coming through. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're doing well. All right, close your eyes, focus, um, set your intentions on the week ahead. Let me shuffle the cards and I'll pay attention to the messages. All right, let's get this all set up. We're going to start off with the energy of today. Um, so this Sunday, we have the chariot. A chariot card in reverse can indicate a few things. First and foremost, it can be a change of direction. It can also be a change of who's in charge. And so for many of you, you're deciding this is the parking lot <laughs> in the cosmic sort of uh, dream that I had. Where are we going to go next? Check the GPS. Who's driving? What's the direction? In your own life, same sort of things. What are you trying to do this week? What do you want to fight for? What's important to you? And are you also willing to kind of take the reins and move forward? Okay, so it's a planning day today, very much so. And that kind of aligns with the, um, I also do a daily pulse where I do a, a one card pull. And uh, I thought today was very work oriented or writing oriented or planning. So this is nicely aligned to the Three of Pentacles. Chariot and Three of Pentacles work together. So um, feel free to sit down a little bit, sketch it out. And it can also just be about putting some things on the calendar, like on Wednesday, I'm going to do this. On Saturday, I'm going to do this. Because uh, I mentioned there are three ways to bring things into being um, before physically doing it. It's thinking it. Um, it's writing it, it's speaking it, all of these things help make them more real. So do any one or all three of those today if you'd like to. Um, some of you may also be doing some traveling because this card can be associated with getting in the car, um, with planes, it's just a general um, travel symbol as well, okay? Take your time, slow down, make sure that you're not forgetting something, and again, make sure that you know why you're doing what you're doing so that there is intention driving the action. Moving forward to the first day of the week, Monday, it's a pretty good day overall. I'll take the four of wands, even if it's in the reverse state. Typically, four of wands is extremely favorable for relationships, um, for setting the foundation for anything new. Uh, it shows, you know, really good teamwork, really good partnership and something that will last. The stage is empty in this card. Sometimes it is in the different four of wands. And so for some of you, that's discombobulating. So you may have thought, I set everything up, where is everyone? <laughs> and this is more figuratively speaking. So maybe you've been, you know, 
trying to get a new job and you're like, why, ha why haven't I heard back? Or, um, or you're owning a business and you put out some marketing blasts and nothing's happening. Keep setting the foundations, keep working hard, don't lose hope. This is basically about find other areas in your life where you can firm up the foundation and continue to make an inviting and, um, and stable sort of stage for the future energy to come forth. Because it will, because the Four of Wands, you know, is a card of hope and possibility and partnership. So this is the day to do the inward work and environmental work to make sure that when that partnership energy comes forth, it's good. You're 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 not le you're not figuring out like oh my gosh I got to deal with this and I I'm looking for this in someone because I don't. So you're just going inward and thinking what do I need to do to not be afraid to feel stable to be fully self sufficient so that I'm calling in someone else who's also done the inner work. Okay, um, and ultimately there could also be an unexpected invitation, much like Two of Cups reversed. Um, or lovers reverse, there could be someone who comes in and you didn't, you were hoping for more time. It's going to be one way or the other. Um, and so if you were hoping for more time and then all of a sudden someone like, oh yeah, we would love to talk to you today. And you thought, oh, I thought I had more time to prepare. You're fine. You're fine. This card is showing me that if you've done the work and you just would like to be perfect, let go of the perfection and just be present. Okay. We have Eight of Pentacles coming through on Tuesday. It's a great card. Eight of Pentacles is about rolling up your sleeves and getting some work done. You can literally see him getting some work done here. Um, this is also a card of education. This is typically the apprentice card where the Three of Pentacles is the uh, mastery or you know final step to a learning process. But whatever you put your energy into on Tuesday, you'll see a return. One thing that I would say is take a moment to breathe to get some feedback, to see what everyone else is doing. This can be very much like nose to the grindstone or having blindfolds on. Sometimes you can miss something because of your overly meticulous, again, we're getting a lot of perfectionist energy coming through on Monday and Tuesday. So just take a step back, um, let go of the need to be perfect, ask for feedback, be open to constructive feedback as well. All of that's gonna be key. Um, some of you may sign up for something, a class, something new, or you may be revising, editing, or reviewing, all very nicely aligned with the supernova energy. Something that I forgot to say, it was on the slide, but I can't read everything on every slide. But what's great about a supernova is it releases materials back into the universe. It creates a nebula of like a cloudy um, foundation around it. So some of you might be looking at materials and putting them together. This is a day where you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can take pieces of things that have been done, learn from them, cobble them together, create, literally he's kind of <laughs> hammering these together and create something new. So recycle, revisit and revise things and you'd be able to save some time, save some energy, save some resources. I kept shuffling the cards because I saw um, reversals. And the interesting thing, as a reader, I can't control, I can keep shuffling it 15 times. If a card wants to come through reverse, it's gonna come through reverse. We don't fear reversals, we read them. Um, and when they're reversed, it's basically saying there's some inward work, some, some thoughts that need to happen, et cetera. Um, all that being said, um, as we're looking at the energy of Wednesday, it's about making sure that you're on board with um, feeling connected to something. So we have a Knight of Wands. Knights reversed are saying, look at, in this case, the idea and how you feel about it. So are you being forced into something that doesn't gel with you on any level, like logically, um, you know, your gut instinct, maybe your own compass for right versus wrong. If there's something that needs to be adjusted, what does a knight do? It champions it, it fights for it. So stand up and say, that's not what we discussed, or I have concerns or questions, or could you clarify? That's it. Any number of ways, depending on how, um, how much force, how much energy you want to put forth. But it is a card to say, make sure you're ready before going to the next step. And it's okay to take the pause and align with the upper ideas. Uh, and if it was upright, I'd just say charge forward. So that's why I like reversals, because it shows me there's something to consider, something to think about. A lot of times in um, messages, people will I, I don't even know why people are keeping track, but on the daily ones, they're like, you know, I've calculated there are more reversals this month than last, last month. Well, maybe there's more inner work to be done. 
focus on the message, not the position. Um, it'd be like saying there's too many letter Y's this month in this word or whatever. <laughs> Just focus people on the messages. All right, let's look at Thursday. On Thursday, we have Four of Pentacles. This is about releasing even in the upright position um, because a lot of times with the Four of Pentacles, we're holding on to something that does not serve our highest good. It's not enough. We've been told perhaps that that's all we should accept or we believe that if we ask for more, it won't happen. So we we allow for a, um, a lack to exist. So this is about stepping up and saying this isn't enough. So if it's, for instance, you know, um, in a relationship, the partner may not be showing up. Um, you have to always get them to, uh, especially if it's a new thing, if you're texting, you can't get their attention. This is sort of saying like you could do better. There needs to be a give and take in a regular relationship. You may be holding up the fort, doing all the work. And again, you're not getting a lot back. So um, if your investment does not re meet the return, like in finances, you wouldn't hold on to it. It's a losing investment. So energetically, when we were talking about the supernova thing, this is the thing that creates the lack that creates the explosion. So let it go. Let it go. So you don't have to go into that supernova moment. Um, the biggest thing here, too, is just about opening your heart and allowing yourself to be a little bit vulnerable, a little bit available and also just sort of like not holding back. So transparency and honesty is key as well. OK, so let's take a look at the energy coming through for the end of the week. Um, Five of Swords. So this is also um, a challenging card, but you're going to be OK with this. So Five of Swords is basically not taking the bait and also uh, really looking at the way that people listen to you when you're talking and are they actually present? Are they in the flow of the energy or is there a mental block? And they're either thinking, I don't want to hear this or I don't I don't agree with you or they're already creating an argument two or three, two or three steps ahead. Um, so if someone is closed off, even like this guy and they're just kind of you could you can see that they're they're angry or upset. You're going to just disconnect and say, why don't we uh, why don't we meet later? Let's talk another time. This isn't a good you'll be able to sort it out. And this is also someone who may not take accountability. They like to get aroused out of it, like they're going to argue with you um, and they enjoy that. So if someone can't listen, won't listen or wants to argue. Focus on other things, uh, because we can see other people that are already moving on or have been battered by the same situation. So sometimes people just don't want to change. Right. There are people out there that just they're not ready to do the work. So don't spin your wheels. That's the main thing here. And um, when it comes to your own communication, we have to also be very careful to um, when communicating to be as kind as possible, when uh, when saying that we're going to do something, follow through the five can eventually lead to the seven. So just be clear, be conscious and step back from any situations that distract. All right, let's focus now on next Saturday. Great energy. Nice reward for the work that you've been doing. The lover's card. It's a great day to meet with people that you already know and love. It's a great day to meet new people. Perfect time to do what you love. There could be Anyone that anything that you've been setting the stage for, it looks like it comes through towards the weekend. That's why I'm like, hold the faith, folks, because we do see that payoff here. There's nothing not to love about this card and there's nothing to be worried about. It's one of the best cards in tarot. So kind of like the world, you really can't you can't find problems with them other than, you know, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes when you get something, it's a surprise, right? That's it. Um, so it's a it's the best day of the week next Saturday. OK. So get yourself ready for that. Do the necessary work prior to that. That's why it's important to um, we'll, we'll review it in a second. But all the sort of decisions that we've been making across those seven days will kind of align you to to be really nicely set up for Saturday. And then I love what we've got here on Sunday. Um, we have the Queen of Swords. So this is a week from today. Um, Queen of Swords. She's clear. She's very, very um, in control, communicative, aligned closely with doing what's right, like second only to the justice card. And um, this is a point where if there's anything you need to communicate to others, stand up for, fight for, do, because she is a card of action, this is the day to do it. Sundays, interestingly enough, it's maybe it's why I have my readings on Sundays. We're, we're in an interesting zone because the old week is over. We're really focusing on the possibilities. I get a lot of work done. 
excuse me, um, Sundays are just very, you know, productive days for me. So uh, I think that you can get a lot done. And every time I read for Sundays, I'm like, I know it's technically a weekend, but what a great day for action and movement and possibility. So there you go, folks. Let's look at the highlights and the challenges for the week ahead. So clearly the highest of the highlights, I would say, is next Saturday. Monday is also a really good day. Um, and this energy could also possibly even start to move in or you'll get some signs of that. And then there's work to be done in the middle of the week. Um, Tuesday is very productive. And I think the only challenging days for you are Thursday and Friday, to be honest. Thursday, just about letting go of stuff and not giving more than you need to. And Friday, not taking the bait and unnecessary conversations, really just focusing on what matters. Okay, we're going to get into an elemental breakdown. So let me just uh, clear the table here. While I'm doing that, if you haven't already done so, please do me a favor and like and subscribe. It does help. I do appreciate it. And I will say thank you in advance for your help on that. All right. Here we go. We're going to take a look at the elemental breakdown, fire, earth, air, and water, and see what's going on here. And I'll be updating my deck page partly for myself because as a part of this move, I'm going to have to buy some new decks and um, may even allow you guys to support me in that because I've been having some mold issues here, but uh, I will update it and probably finally get an Oracle list together as well, but that'll come in the coming month here. All right, let's focus. Let's see. All right. Fire. Earth. Okay, we're not going to do three. <laughs> um, for air, we're going to take these two, air and water. Okay, so a lot going on with air this week. We're going to start off first with fire. Fire, we have the two of pentacles coming through. And with this one, it is about finding the necessary balance in your life. So Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, um, you may be pulled between two necessary uh, energies. And the, the choice here is really like, where can you make the, the biggest impact? What can you let go of? What can you ask help with so that you're not sort of like pulled in all directions here? So by focusing and saying that word no, you're going to free yourself up. This can also just be work-life balance. Um, for those of you that have been working too much or maybe having fun too much and have to put in the work, whatever it is, now is the time to find the balance. We do have a butterfly on this one. So you're going to reach new heights once you've done that. And again, with the two of pentacles is always the opportunity to really embrace one thing, plant that seed and see it grow. Okay, it's a good week ahead. Um, you can't be... You can't meet everyone's expectations. Um, the two of pentacles can sometimes be seen as indecisive because it's put in the middle. And I saw the parking lot scene in my dreams. So I think this is especially for Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. And spirit and your higher self and your future self was asking you, what are we doing? Are we, are we staying or are we going? And that's the choice. And once you're ready to get in the car, <laughs> then things start to happen and you can take flight. I like that we saw the, the butterfly on here, which shows that there is movement after the indecision. Okay, a good week, but a choice that has to be made first and take care of yourself. If there's anything that's out of balance, that's priority number one. Earth. All right. Um, fun little detail on this. People will say, well, where's the 10th pentacle? It's hidden. It's in the center. Um, so you have nine core pentacles and a star within a star. So. With this, there could be a hidden opportunity presenting itself just like this illustration and um, and you get more than expected. So embrace that if it happens. Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, I think you're going to have a good week. Harder to see in this one, except we can see all of these concentric circles. But this can represent things like marriage, contracts, house, home, work. Um, there's usually resources and people, whereas the Ten of Cups is mostly people. This involves the 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 sort of like ties that bind the people together. So that's why you would kind of transpose this over work or family where you're obligated to be with each other. So you're looking at all of the things that you're, yeah, it's really obligations this week, isn't it? And you're deciding which obligations are you going to put the most energy into. Um, you might also, I like to think of sometimes relationships as orbits 
which orbits are you going to pull closer so that you can, if you're the star, you're going to give them more of your energy, more of your time. And um, if you don't want something, you push it out to the outer orbits. So prioritization of your resources and uh, how you spend them is really important. But for some of you, something could be getting serious. So um, and like I said, a new contract, someone reaching out their hand and saying, hey, do you want to take this to the next level in friendship, love or work? It's a good card. Really nothing to fear in the Ten of Pentacles. It's abundance. But there's something unexpected, as we can see with the pentacle within a pentacle or star within a star. OK, look at, you know, I was talking about um, this one here where I said, take take a moment to look around. You may find that there's a hidden resource or a hidden opportunity around you. And so that was the message for Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Let's move from Earth to air. There were too many cards. I chose the top and the bottom just because I don't want to be here reading all day. Um, so you've got good energy here. And it's about seeing through something that appears initially as oh, this again, um, because the five of pentacles can sometimes kind of like push back uh, or like not push back. It's kind of like an irritation of an old wound. Um, that you thought you had healed and you mostly have, but this is the final test and it's really a chance to rise above and you're not going to kind of like what, so for the air signs, it's this card that's coming through. Someone says something and they're trying to do this. They want you to get upset and you're like, no, been there, done that. I'm going to take the high ground and I'm going to move beyond this. Judgment would be the moment after the supernova as well. Um, because this is rebirth. So the traditional card, you would see a, um, a bunch of coffins, souls rising up and an angel on the top. And this one, we just see the doves and a really nice bright dove at the top. But it's very Phoenix rising energy. So whatever didn't work this week, whatever has come to pass, whatever is out of your control, so be it. And whoever can't deal with that, that's on them. And if you are feeling a little worse for the wear because of that, that's okay. Um, but this, there's something bigger, better, and brighter. And the universe pushed you through this so that you got uncomfortable and moved beyond it. So you're still being guided. You're still being supported. Sometimes spirit works in a way that is uncomfortable, but it will help you get to a place that's far better in the future. Okay. For you, you were the one where I um, was picking up on the sort of lying on your back, enjoying that sort of easy passage after it. So once you go through that irritation, then it's smooth sailing for you. For the rest of you, if you're having a really good week, this is just about expanding your thoughts. So supernova is also all about something new, something different. Don't rinse and repeat. Think bigger, think differently, go into a brand new sort of um, caliber with that. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, big changes, big shifts, change for the better. And after the moment of discomfort, comfort. Moving on to water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Um, definitely an aha moment coming through here. Um, this is a different eight of wands. Uh, so normally we would see them flying through the air. But what we kind of see on this one is the moment uh, that the key hits the ignition. So you're doing something, it's like a turnkey moment or a lightning or a light bulb moment. And then things really start to take off. So for you, um, I think this is an exciting week and it's about maintaining the momentum um, because sometimes with this, you can feel a little lost in the shuffle. Um, sometimes you can also just be worried about unnecessary things like, well, what comes like, you know, Am I ready? Like, again, some of that stuff. Am I ready for this? What comes next? Sometimes it's okay to just enjoy the moment. So enjoy the moment and keep up the pace. And yes, plan and yes, you know, sort of dream and all of that. But there's so much work that got you to this moment. Lightning doesn't often like, well, there, I've studied enough as a, as a totem to know that it hits the same point several times. But once it's finished, then it usually goes back to other spaces. So in this lightning moment, really embrace the fact that you're here, you're able to do it, and you're going to maximize it because uh, you don't know what tomorrow brings. So enjoy this. And, um, and that's not as a scary thing. It's just saying like, every moment's a blessing. Don't waste it. And you can get a lot done this week. That's a really productive card. So whatever you want to set your energy into, 
there's a lot of movement, a lot of momentum, a lot of progress. So it's a great week for Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. It's a pretty good week overall, actually, for everybody. So now we are going to move on to the special topic, which today is supernova, recalibrate, rearrange, and rebirth. Let me get everything cleared up here, and then I will change up the decks. Um, welcome, everybody. Good to see you, by the way. I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's get started. All right. Let's see. I'm going to let the decks choose. I had two choices here that I was going to look between. So sometimes I do this. Which deck wants to be the one that's chosen? We'll go with the higher suit. This one does. Okay, here we go. That's going to be your center card. And it's perfect, like I said, this is the moment after rebirth. Looks pretty good, folks. Um, already, I can see moving into something new, which aligns to what we were talking about um, in channeled messages, a celebration, um, movement here. It looks like we're going in the right direction after a period where there might have been something that paused or caused you to put the pause button on. Nice. Okay, um, I have to pause for a second. Supernova, recreation, renewal, rebirth by light. <laughs> That's in the wealth area. Um, as a reader, always fun when it's exactly the topic. <laughs> so you guys chose well, clearly. All right. Let's begin with Catalyst Energy first and foremost. All right, so for the Catalyst here, ready to strike gold? <laughs> we have gold coming through here. Um, so with this, basically this is sparking change, action and movement in your life. One of the cool things about stars exploding is they create other elements. And uh, mostly they're created from helium and hydrogen, I believe. But anyway, once they go through that process of a supernova, the cloud around them, plus any of the planets that existed around them, then is, is sort of like there are heavier metals like gold. Um, and it usually, I believe it only comes after a star has gone supernova. So these heavier elements, again, I'm not an astrophysicist, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a scientist, but I seem to remember that. Um, so if it's different, put it in the comments below. <laughs> but anyway, it's a heavier element that comes through time and space. Um, you've, you've been doing some inner work on this, and now is your moment. You're, and if we can just take it at face value, which is saying in this moment, this is like an ace of pentacles, a gold coin that's coming forth. So some good stuff coming through. We got the 10 of pentacles for one of the elements this uh, week. So this is a really good moment. We've got the eight of pentacles for everybody. So this is a good moment to really see some progress. And um, it's mostly a question this week of this. Are you ready to receive? And I know that that sounds easy, but um, sometimes we have little things going on in our head, like, again, just the inner saboteur thinking, first, am I worthy? Am I ready? Is this too much? Is it not enough? Whatever. There could be these questions. So let's release the stuff that holds you back from embracing the big old 
gold ace of pentacles that wants to come through. And your mantra can be, I'm ready, I'm worthy. We don't have to complicate it. I'm ready and I'm worthy of all the abundance that comes through. That's it. Easy peasy. All right, judgment, center card. So reach higher. Literally, we can see the souls reaching up. Connect to your higher calling. If you haven't been doing what you've been wanting to do, now is the time to pivot and say, all right, let's make a change. Change does not have to happen overnight, but you're setting it into motion this week. That's the important thing. If someone, if someone or something kind of stood in your way or released you, um, so this can include people that have lost their jobs or even incurred like a monetary loss or something. This is rising up. It's like I said, the phoenix rising from the ashes. So it's just a moment of recalibration. That's one of the things that we're doing. Recal first of the three. And then rearranging what you have and deciding what to keep and what to leave. It's kind of like if you've been through a flood or tornado or like me where I'm going through some stuff, there are certain things I'll take. There are certain things that I won't because of the mold and you got to move on. And so you've got to assess things and move on and then decide what's next because you can't hold on to the past and nor does it really matter. And things are just things, folks. We can't take them with us anyway. So as long as you've got this, your your ideas and your heart is beating, you can come up with a new plan. And that's what this is really reminding you. you. The best parts of you are there. And I saw the two elements in mythology, the Ba and the Ka, the essence and the personality were coming through loud and clear. Take that to the next place. Don't allow yourself to become fragmented, which is what Spirit was kind of showing me in dreams last night. As we look at the opportunity here, this is the reassessment, the release, the rebuilding. Um, Seven of Pentacles is a very auspicious symbol to come through for that. What it does say, however, is not everything overnight. You've got to take time. Um, so it's going to take a while for those vines to grow, for the fruits of this labor to um, come to fruition. But when they do, they're sweet. So continue to now move forward, take your time, invest, and you may find like that star within a star in the other card that I showed you where things get bigger, better, brighter, faster than expected. Uh, because we didn't even talk about this, but sometimes in those big nebulas, as things heat up and coagulate and everything, all of a sudden there's a birth of a new star. Um, so just as one blinks out, another one can blink into existence. So for some of you, there can be the rebirth energy coming forth from the mess, from the chaos, from the tower that was. So you want to keep building and looking and being present and don't rush it. One thing with the Seven of Pentacles is to not overextend. Don't overspend, don't overpromise, and I <laughs> don't even overdeliver when it comes to certain things. Make sure you're getting enough rest and taking care of yourself. Um, so I know a lot of you that probably work as freelancers. You want to go like and give 110%. Give 95, give 90. You're still getting an A with that effort. Save a little bit so that you can also just enjoy life, okay? Something that I wish that a younger version, if I, if I could go back in time and talk to the version of me that was like in high school and college and um, maybe in his early 20s, I would just say, chill out. You don't need to work so hard. <laughs> There's going to be a long path ahead, a lot of days where you're going to need to, to do that. It's not today. Deep past. So the one thing you want to do this week is take action. There's something that you've decided. There's an idea, there's a contract, there's something on the, on the table, and it's really just spirit coming through saying, now. This is an affirmative. It's a yes. And it's also saying, if not now, when? So I mentioned the power of putting something on a calendar or setting it into motion. Make it happen. Once you do that, things can start to align. Synchronicities can start to present themselves. Um, the podcast will be launching next month. The exact date depends because I'm doing some final things. But one of the things, one of the ways that I did that was finally just saying, we're doing this to my team. And we pulled together everything and it just started to happen. And then it took one month to basically do the editing and finalizing of the interview. But sometimes it's just a matter of saying, we're going to launch this. We're going to do this. So you, you can do something. It, there just comes a point where you have to pull it all together in whatever form it is and then move on to the next thing. So 
um, whether it's moving to a new house, deciding what school to go to, saying yes to a relationship, launching a project, whatever the move is, promise to yourself, I'm going to do this within 30 days, 40 days, one year, two years, whatever, and then just set it into motion because you could wait forever for something. Perfection's not the purpose, folks. You're supposed to be working through things, getting better with each iteration. Um, and, you know, I've even looked at early videos that I did or like I was talking about going back in time or whatever. Like you're supposed to have improvement. It's not supposed to be perfect. We're, we're works in progress. That's why when you look at an old picture of yourself, you're like, what was I thinking about wearing that or wearing my hair this way? Look, well, that was the best at that moment in time. And we learn. So just Forge that sword, take an action, make a decision, get it going, folks, okay? Because this is what I see here happening for some of you. It's um, Medusa, turning, <laughs> turning your thoughts to stone. So you're thinking in too many directions, and it frustrates us sometimes. Five of Wands can be a, a stagnation or a lack of progress. So the illustration on this one is pretty cool. What happens typically, though, we see people taking those five Wands and they're wasting energy. Um, pushing them against one another, and they're kind of creating this circle. Um, so it shows cyclic, cyclical motion, rather, that isn't necessarily moving us forward. So if you're catching certain thoughts that just end up being cyclical or end up stopping the action, stop the thought. Move beyond it. Try something else. Talk to someone else if you need help with that, right? Um, and ultimately, Medusa... Her, her curse was actually a form of protection and punishment. Greek and Roman mythology is complicated. Um, but it, now I've talked about this before. She would be like more powerful than even Storm in like the X-Men. She, I think in modern mythology, she would be cast in a different light. But um, sometimes we feel like if I don't move forward, I'm protecting myself. So that's all we need to take away from that myth. Uh, but yes, you're protecting protecting yourself from... Uh, failure, but you're also preventing yourself from progress, success, and abundance. So isn't it better to try and fail than not to try and never to experience the opportunity? Sometimes we think it's far more, we're, we're the worst critic, basically. You think it's it's bad and, and others are like, no, this is, you're, you're amazing, or this is amazing, or you're fine. So get out of your headspace. That's all we really need to take away from the Medusa card here. Once you do that, it's, it's more fun. This is what I was picking up on for, um, for the air signs a little bit here where it was going to be easy sailing. So the Knight of Cups or Prince of Cups, um, yes, there's always going to be some tendrils in the background trying to pull you down or hold you back, but he's not going to let that um, stop him. So follow your heart. That's the main message with this. Follow your heart. And if someone wants to give you some good news or give you a hug or say a job well done, just say thanks. Thank you. So open yourself up. There's always going to be someone. This is the Five of Swords energy that came through on the week um, around Friday. There's always some sort of sea monster out there that's trying to pull you back into old patterns. But the Knight of Cups is on a horse moving away from that. So whoever the sea monster is, let them be. Page of Swords, listening skills and communication skills, because a page has to listen to. But um, she's taking the sword that we talked about at great length, and she's taking it to the next level. So she said, I'm going to do it. Now she's doing it. Now she's picking up the phone. She's sending a text, sending an email, meeting someone. We got little butterflies flying around her. And some really cool things are coming through. Okay. Um, also, she's gone the distance. Look at this card. So we can see she's come a long way to get to this moment and she's ready for it. So everything you've been through, including especially whatever, everybody's had a different judgment moment. Um, but whatever that is, whatever ashes you're rising up from, it gave you the power and the energy and the clarity to get through this. Never noticed before. It looks like she has an anchor on her garment there. Um, so... Anchor yourself in this thought of, I can do this, I will do this, I am doing this. I can, I will, I am. This is you this week, um, and it's a really good card here, Queen of Pentacles. So in the upright position, we have a very lovable card here. So it's basically showing abundance, um, fertility, speed of movement, 
power. Um, in the reverse state, though, it's showing your need to take care of yourself. She, she and the Empress are the mothers of tarot, basically. They come through to nurture, to create. Um, but in this particular point in time, because I'm reading for all of you, it's saying slow down a little bit and ask yourself, do I have enough? What do I want? What do I need? What am I doing to communicate that to others? Am I putting boundaries down where I need to? Saying yes, saying no. Um, what do I need? So that's your homework assignment today so that you can set it into motion and then decide this week, what do I need? What do I want? What am I going to do about this? And create the action. She's taking resources, a little bit here, a little bit here, rearranging them, putting them together. She's the, she's the builder. She has a green thumb. That's why king and queen of pentacles, there are vines everywhere if it's a traditional Rider Waite Smith deck. There are vines, there are green things, there are rabbits running around. Rapid growth. So once you've made the decision that things can happen, you're, you've, you've got the magic touch, okay? So this will speed up, but one of the things that is required is this. It's the action and it's the, the boundaries and the choices and moving through all the stuff that we talked about here. But I do see a moment of rapid expansion after you looking at all of this thinking, well, how did I get here? How do I clean up this mess? You will, you are, you can. Um, and there's a window of opportunity opening up here in the Three of Wands. It's one of the cooler Three of Wands. Um, typically, you would see a person standing on a cliff, looking down at a beach, watching the ships come through. Um, the, I'm using Rachel True's deck here, True Heart Intuitive. It's a great one. Um, so she or her illustrator chose to basically put the person in the Three Wands, looking straight at the opportunity head on. I kind of like that. I always like an active Three of Wands, and this is about as active as you can get. You can see little ships on the horizon. You've got to go way down to the corner. There they are. Um, but this person is actively calling those in. They're focusing on the new day because we have the sun right there. And also very in touch with communication. Look at those three birds flying around them today. Um, so the card was in reverse. I'll double check, but um, I believe the card was reversed. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you're not wasting uh, time or energy looking at the past, worrying about what might have been. Instead, you're going to be focusing on what is happening. And yeah, it was reversed in this moment. So, um, so focus on the future. Focus on now. Live in the moment. Really kind of embrace what's happening. And one thing that I always like to remind folks of with the Three of Wands is if you fix your, your um, sort of like focus in one place and think this is the only place that it can happen, what about here? What about here? What about here? So look in all directions, okay? Remember to look in, inside out, upside down, you know, really consider different things and don't be afraid to meet opportunity uh, where it's at. Hope, spheres, and opportunities. We have the fool. The fool here is a reminder as illustrated that things take time to materialize, okay? Um, so I quite like that one. <laughs> um, when you first step foot into something new, you don't really know everything that's going to be possible. Um, you just know it feels good or you know that you're guided there. And also you can fill in some of the details. The coolest thing about living in this planet in this time is free will. There are different dimensions. There are different planets. There are different experiences, possibly even different universes out there. But in this particular planet, when we come to the surface and start to live our lives, we get this power of free will and we get to decide, I don't want to do that. I want to do this, et cetera, et cetera. So embrace that. We have um, this beautiful spring flower coming forth, which is nicely aligned to where we're at right now. So um, also this would be one that would be connected with um, the temperance card. So Basically, good things come to those who are patient, and in this case, those who take the first step. So give yourself time to fill in the details, exercise free will, explore what's out there. Remember, one step at a time, okay? And now we have something to celebrate, Three of Cups. New love, new opportunity. Um, this is encouraging you to get out of your hermit phase, to mix and mingle. You might meet an important connection or love or opportunity as you're out and about. Um, generally speaking, especially because this is an outcome and it's kind of like the reward for this, it's something to celebrate. 
So I, I think that as the week progresses and it nicely aligns also to the seven day forecast because we got the lovers on the weekend and then the queen of swords that you're going to be entering into a good period. You just have to move through. Um, the midweek seems like where some of the challenges or work or push will be, but the very beginning and the very end are very much connected to this. So there you go. Uh, one thing that I like about the way this is illustrated is there's some grounding. They have their feet on the ground. So they're celebrating, but they're not losing track of what's important. So there is a little bit of presence of mind. And so it doesn't feel like there's an um, debaucherous energy with this. Sometimes with the three of cups and the nine of cups, it can be overboard, but I don't get that here. It's just like saying, no, take some time to celebrate life's little victories that you got through something and you know, you're still standing, right? Like that old Elton John song, you're still standing indeed. Let's expand this. We're going to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny for some additional insight, starting with uh, mind, body, and spirit. We have the thread. Some of you are hanging on <laughs> by a thread, or we can look at this in a more um, elevated form. And it's kind of like those of you that enjoy, uh, why can't I think of it, knitting or some or building things. You're constructing things and you're, it's like thread by thread, brick by brick. So if you're in that constructing sort of energy phase, it's saying good for you. If you feel like you're hanging on by a thread, we have a rainbow at the end of this and it's saying it's well worth the journey. Um, continue to hang on. If there's something that served its highest purpose already and you think to yourself, I need to let it go. It's okay. However you look at this, there's a rainbow. You just have to get through this moment. Remember some of you, um, I believe it was the fire signs, but I had the two of pentacles. It was the butterfly. Yeah. So if you're being pulled too thin, the two of pentacles has to do with cutting the cord and saying enough. I don't need to do this. And sometimes there are people in our lives that want to kind of keep tugging and pulling it. So just use the page of swords here and just say, no, sorry. No, that's it. You're not even really apologizing. Just no. <laughs> it's hard, right? We're so used to wanting to sugarcoat it, but oftentimes you can just say, this isn't realistic. I have too much on my plate. I can't do this, whatever, but you don't have to apologize for not doing something. You could say, I wish I could help, but, but presently I do not have the resources. You might want to try this person instead. So you can try to help that way, but you don't have to apologize for having boundaries. And I guess we need to hear that because it's in the health area. So have boundaries if you need them, when you need them and use them. <laughs> okay. It's hard. I know I'm looking at comments. Yeah, definitely practice it. Practice different ways that feel right for you. It does get easier over time. One, one really important way to do it also is in RSVPs. So I try to give people at least that 24 hour, like, so if it's a party and you've gotten an invite on whatever app or social media thing, if I think to myself, no, I just can't do this. I will let them know as soon as I get the download. I'm like, no. And then usually I say why in, the, in a text or something. I'm too tired. I have work to do. Let's catch up next week. Something like that. It's better. So you can start with that kind of stuff. Don't make plans that you're not going to keep. Don't leave someone waiting until the day of an event. Say no, say no in advance, let them plan. And then that frees you up for other things too. Someone's asking what, what if someone says no, but, but, but they don't, someone's not listening, repeat it. Think of like what you do with a kid. No means no. Um, and then it, the, the key thing here, and I'm not a therapist, nor am I, a, I mean, we do coaching here, but this is something you probably want to take to another level. <laughs> but if someone doesn't accept no as an answer, then they don't respect you. They're not respecting your wishes or your boundaries. So you don't owe them anything. Remember that. Okay. I can't help you with how to practice it or how to do it, but I'm just giving you that little seed of insight. If you say this is enough and this is all I can give and that's not enough, that's, that's like a, a warning flag that someone wants too much or doesn't listen. That's the five of swords, folks. I'm glad you asked the question. Five of swords, Friday, just walk away. There are two people in that card that just go in other directions. If they're still talking, just say, no, that's it. It's not worth your time. Um, I mean, I know there's different things, but if we're talking about a coworker, a family member, that's like extended or something, and they're just wanting more, just say, that's it. That's all I can give. If that's not enough, I'm, we're not going to say, I'm sorry. If that's not enough, that's the best. 
And that's, that's something you're going to have to look at. Put it back on them, okay? It's a good question because it does affect health. So there you go. Now let's look at the cards and see what else is coming through. Some of you had a wake-up call or an epiphany. Um, the good news with judgment, it's different than death. You're already on the other side. So the death card can show an imminent change that has to happen. Judgment, you've already, you're aware of it. I could have done better here or I learned from this and now I'm going to do things differently this time around using your higher judgment, not judging yourself. Don't overwork this week. And that's why I was taking a moment to answer. I don't usually do it, but it was related to the topic. So if it's related, I will answer the questions. But um, if you've got to be good with your resources, because if we go all the way back to my first card and the first thing that we talked about today, I'll pull it up. It bears repetition. I mentioned that the thing that can pull us into a supernova is this, like a lack of balance and a lack of good choices. So we have to say no so that we don't end up having that moment where it's like, well, okay, that that wasn't optimal. So that's why the limits and the boundaries are important. Just keep redrawing them and restating them. No, no, no. Repeat it. Eventually it will stick in someone's head. Don't overthink. If you, by the way, some of you may be dealing with pressure this, uh, and, um, and thoughts that hold you back. And again, I'm not a psychologist, so obviously you'll work with a counselor in this case, but this can be something where you can't stop thinking about someone, something, or it's a persistent thought. Talk it out. Whoever, however you want to do that. Um, talk it through. Clear the thought. There is something there that needs to be control alt deleted. <laughs> and once you can reboot your thought process or just try it a different way. I can give you one coping technique here. Again, not a counselor, but been through similar things on this. If you think, what if this happens like something bad? What if it actually goes extremely well instead? And if it can go extremely well, isn't it worth trying? So just focus, take a fear or a doubt and turn it inside out. Uh, what if I fail? Well, what if you succeed? Well, what if they don't like me? What if they love you? Well, what if I'm not good enough? What if you're more than enough and they want more time and energy from you? Just flip it around. You got to have a balance for the thoughts and then meet it in the middle. What if it's probably okay? What if they're going to be fine with this? What if I just am making a, a mountain out of a molehill? So you can try that. And then if that doesn't work, talk to someone. <laughs> All right. So those are the big things here. Movement is going to really help. Exercise is a great way to help with this too. Getting out there, getting some fresh air, exploring the world. Um, definitely important. My air conditioner is still broken. So one thing that I've been doing is when I'm not recording videos, opening the windows. It is nice. You can hear the birds. The breeze blows through. Um, I get outside with my dog like we see on this card. So change up the scenery, change up the environment a bit. That will help you quite a, quite a bit. There is a way through whatever you're going through. You're already halfway through it, if not all the way. Now it's about focusing on what's next. Um, mostly good stuff when it comes to health, actually. It's just about cutting this cord or finishing what you've started or having firm boundaries, which we talked about, or getting through. It's, it's psychological and emotional is what I'm picking up on more than anything. Maybe for some of you, there's a little bit of health recovery or um, physical rehabilitation after something has happened, but it does feel like the big event is done and we're now on the other side here. Okay. Please take some time, not only to get out in the world, but to spend some time with people that you love. There is a chance to meet people. We're going to look at that in a moment. I didn't even mention that because we're going to, I separately look at love, but if you're looking for love, the Knight of Cups and the Three of Cups are there and it does look like they're it's easy to talk to this person and it's just out and about in the world like you doing your thing you're not necessarily swiping on an app or anything like that um earth sign and energy also coming through but i'll get into that in a moment because we're kind of going away from that one last thing by the way um as much as i love the king and the queen of pentacles they have a different message in health uh a little bit of a splurge is fine but when you get to the second, third, or fourth cookie, it's time to put them away. Um, <laughs> so overeating, over drinking, over exercising, over anything. We don't want to do that. Because the king and queen of pentacles can, um, 
in their head, they're very good at saying, I deserve it. I'm worth it. Yes, you're worth a little, <laughs> little bit of a splurge, but don't go to extremes. That's it. All right. Um, let's move on to the next thing. So we're going to go on to wealth now. Resources, life, purpose, and career. This is where I got excited and a little bit giddy when I looked at the card. We have the Orion activation. Here's your special topic. So the biggest movement is coming in your connection with your resources. Resources affects everybody because we live on a planet where we exchange resources. So whether you're living with your parents, a student, you're uh, single, you're married, you're retired, you're retired and single, you, you use money, you have time, you spend it with people, this affects you. So it's a universal card. This is where the energy comes through. So something is getting bigger or smaller. <laughs> um, recreation, by the way, I never looked at how the word is also like recreation. Um, so you can celebrate the fact that you can recreate something. And then we have renewal and rebirthing energy, light being the key thing. How can I take and make the best of this? That is your statement. That is your mantra. How can I make the best of this and bring it to the next level? Whatever's in front of you, however much or little. Because she has the green thumb, the magic touch, and things will start to move quickly once you make that recalibrated thought. I'll do my best to look at it in three or four categories. We're going to start off for those of you that are employed, and then we'll do all the different categories. But if you have a job, do you want to keep the job? <laughs> I'm going to get real, real with you here. Um, the judgment card is you asking yourself sometimes, is this it? Some of you might have just started or been promoted. In that case, celebrate. So if you're in something new and your head's going in weird spaces, get out of your head space, celebrate, job well done. For those of you that have reached a level of success and you're like, is this it? I can't answer that for you, but I think it's a healthy question to ask. And what you can do is think, how much have I accomplished? What more do I need? And see what's out there. Literally with these two, explore the opportunities. This is a card of walking and exploring and you could find something else if you want to. And there's a happy ending either way. You could stay or you could go, but it's about the heart. What does the heart want? That's, that's on you, that's your decision here. Overall, it's a great spread. Little bit of headaches towards the beginning of the week, but, um, but happy stuff towards the end. And the main thing here is finish what you've started. Um, you know, if there's something you promised to do, do it, but it feels like success. This is a card of success. This is a card of celebration. This is a new opportunity. This is an end and this is a beginning. So it's a, it's a week where you can go wherever you want to. And there's nothing to really be worried about except what we have already highlighted, you know, overextension um, and the five of swords, the boundary stuff, you know, aside from that, it's a pretty good week. And again, I feel most of you are on this end. You've, you might have just gotten a reward or an opportunity or you're bored and you want to try something new. This still shows that there's an opportunity. So explore if you want to. For those that are looking for work, it's a good week to be looking. Um, there could be a call back. This is like an email. This is a call back or an email back or a text back or whatever. Um, we see something good here. There may be a necessary move to make that happen on this diagonal. This is also doing the footwork, doing the legwork, seeing what's out there like um, and possibly trying to, like I've said this before, but the, the best way to get in at a new job is to know someone because we see here an application, someone taking that application, walking to and speaking positively about you to someone. So maybe you're hesitating and thinking, I really don't want to like lean on this person or whatever. It's okay. Two of my best jobs happened that way with somebody word of mouth. I, I was texting with someone and then they were like, well, why don't you just apply and I'll take your resume, send it to me. This was back when we had AOL instant messenger. So early two thousands. Um, but yeah, I, I worked with someone at one company and then we were both in others and then he landed a new job and he said, it's really great here. You should try it. And I was like, all right. So I sent him a message and within a week I had a new job um, because he walked it over to the hiring person. And then um, another time, in a different division of that same company, I was unhappy and, and someone said, why don't you just talk to my old boss? There's a position over there that, that you're actually perfect for. Um, and so, and again, within a week. 
So rapid things can happen sometimes. This was okay because the people said, why don't you just send it to me or I'll do this for you. But sometimes you can ask, you can reach out and say, hey, I see you working there. Would you mind or do you know someone? Exercise those networking skills. This is literally a card of networking, okay? There were lots of other examples where it wasn't that easy in my career, but there were two where it was nice to know someone. And um, nowadays we have social media networks like LinkedIn that help us identify that. So if you know someone, go for it. This is also saying look in different places. Uh, so if you've been trying the same job type or job industry, we see it being turned upside down here and you can, we're in the supernova energy folks. So reimagine, rebirth. Don't do the same thing. That ultimately is when my life started to get really, really fun and interesting is when I stopped doing the same job. And I was like, I don't wanna, like a little kid, I don't wanna do this anymore. <laughs> um, I had to wait two years to say, I don't wanna, but then I got to say, I don't wanna, and then I got to just keep trying new things. So now, whenever I wanna complain for, you know, putting in a 12 hour day, I'm like, no, you sign up for this and it's a lot more engaging and you get to do what you wanna do on your terms. So. Get to the point where you think, I don't want to, and then what do you want to do and how far do you want to go for that? Um, but you can turn, you can use your, your skills for something different if you are willing to try. And yes, yeah, sometimes it is starting over, starting new. But remember, you can take all of those pieces and it, it's a little easier than if you were just stepping into the industry. Okay, so this is especially for those of you that may have worked 10, 15 years or something and you want to take a pivot. It's not going to take as long as you think because you're wiser, smarter and clearer on how to do all of this. Okay, um, there we go. Cause to celebrate, though, at the end of the day here with the Three of Cups. So it looks like a good week. Shifting the focus to those that are retired um, and then I'll look at students for those that are retired. For some of you, you just want to enjoy your time and do whatever you want to do. Good for you. This does not have to be travel in the getting on an airplane sort of thing. This is saying, I'm going to spend the day at the beach or I'm going to go to the library or I'm going to meet some friends for dinner or lunch or drinks. Good for you. That's what retirement's about. Um, this is also taking knowledge, doing your own thing. We saw the building card coming through that eight of pentacles energy or rebuilding energy here. You might have a pet project that you're working on. I think it's good to continue to have things to do. When I look at my parents, they lacked that in their retirement. And I think I'll always have something as long as, <laughs> as long as you guys are ready and willing to receive, I can be like Gandalf when I'm in my uh, golden years <laughs> sharing some knowledge with you, but you know, on whatever platform we're, we're, we're at at that point. But like, listen, there's, there's things to do and there's people that are willing to connect to you. So have some fun. Students, uh, by the way, for those that are retired, uh, there is this, before I get to students, there's a morning process and also like a what, what's next thing. And I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but for me, when I quit my job, it was almost like an early retirement. It was an early retirement from that path. And then I have to keep working because I'm younger. Um, so I was like, all right, we're going to do something different. But I had three to six months where I thought I've either made the biggest mistake in my life or the best decision. But I felt very guilty for not doing what everyone else was doing because I would hear my neighbors go to work. I would watch people on social media talking about their new jobs and this. And I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if what I'm doing is going to be. And then also people had judgments over what I. So I had to get to the point where I just thought, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to be in my swim lane. I'm going to just kind of keep a low profile and slowly, brick by brick, thread by thread, build something. So it's no one's business but your own, whatever you do. So if you're recently retired and you're like, I'm figuring it out, you don't have to put on a good show for everybody. Just say, life's good. What's going on with you? Put the questions back in their court, okay? And slowly you'll find your way. But do the inner questions and soul searching thinking, what do I want to do next? Your life is continuing. The thread is continuing and it's a choice for you. And it's a gateway. This is a big gateway for everybody. Now let's go to students. Students, you are at some sort of precipice here. You might have just graduated or you might not like the program that you got into. It's okay to change your mind. And the world's a lot bigger and, uh, you know, sort of like more expansive than any curriculum prepares you for. So 
just take it a step at a time. The, I remember the first day I got out of school and the first week that I was working, I'm like, this is what I went to school for? This is what the real world's like? I don't know if I like this. Um, and I had to kind of figure out what I was going to do next. So there is that aha moment. And uh, don't worry, it gets better. And you will find the right path and the right sort of thing for you. But it's another moment of like, you're, you're out there. You're being born into a different experience. So whether you're just starting out or just wrapping up or somewhere in the middle, the truth is you're always in that phase of like a baby crying a little bit like, what is this? This is new. Have fun with it. Babies also laugh too. So have some fun in that, that reinvention energy. And I think I covered everything. So we're going to move on to love now and talk a little bit about what's coming through here. We have the canary spirit. Sing your own song. Uh, that was a Mama Cass song, right? Make your own kind of music. Sing your own kind of song. So uh, we can learn from her on that one. The canary in the coal mine is a different thing, which is you may sense things before others do. So in your friend or family group, you may be the first one to pick up on things. Um, you may be the most outspoken. That's your, that's your special thing. <laughs> Whatever it is that makes you you, um, don't lose that, okay? Looking at three different categories. If you're in a relationship, it's either going big or it's going in a different direction. That's judgment. It's what, you know, like, I will give you this gift with this because it'll just simplify it. If it's been a long-term sort of thing and you're at that phase of deciding, you can't force the decision. It'll feel right. And if you ask a question and the other person isn't ready, at least you know, right? At least you're clear. So I think it's worth having a conversation for those that are looking at commitment, um, marriage, for instance, in, in particular. Okay, so that's one thing. Accept the answer for that person that says, when someone won't take no for an answer, take no for an answer if someone says no in this instance, for sure. Or if they're not ready, accept, what, accept their lack of preparation. You don't want to force someone into something that they're not ready to, to do. And this is including someone that on every other level is perfect, but maybe they're not ready to start a family. If that's really what you want, then, then that's not the right time for you. Okay, so you have to be in agreement on core things. And the core things here in the relationship that are coming up are self-care. For some of you, family expansion, um, money. So even in existing relationships, these things are coming forth. So talk about those core things. Uh, what I do like in healthy relationships is there's some movement. So there could be cause to celebrate. Some of you may have just gotten a new job or something just came to fruition because this can be a figurative birthing, not necessarily having a baby. So there could be something where it's like, we finally did this. Yay. So celebrate. Communication is open this week. I don't always see communication cards, but they're here. Um, the one thing you want to avoid is walking out on a conversation. Uh, it would be a great time to do something together. So you could plan uh, some sort of an outing. You could plan a date night. You could any sort of joint activity is coming through quite nice, but I see some nice movement here in career and money, and it's just about aligning to, to common goals and common interests. For those of you that are looking for love, here's what I see. Yes, it's possible. Exclamation point. Yes. Um, this person talks a lot or you talk a lot. The canary spirit of the, it, I mentioned earlier that it was kind of easy to, to communicate. If anything, maybe there's over communication, slow down, take a deep breath, make sure that that person gets a chance to talk about themselves as well, um, et cetera. Um, or if they're talking a lot, is, is that going to be an issue? One, one side of the coin seems to be overly communicative, which kind of makes me laugh. It's just probably nerves, um, especially when I'm looking at the party scene, wanting to make a good impression, but not knowing how to breathe and stop. So silences are okay especially when you're eating dinner or just hanging out, like you don't have to fill every moment. That's the gift. That's the message here that I see. Uh, but we have a water sign and an earth sign. Earth sign seems a little bit more serious about wanting to take it to the next level or getting into a traditional marriage or having a family or something like that. Um, this energy is a little bit more loose and open. Be clear on what it is that you want. That's the key thing here. These energies are also very much not about signing on the dotted line. The fool is super non-committal and the three of cups is about like just getting to know someone. So for those that are serious, remember that courtship does have a 
part in the whole like it's good to go on a date it's good to meet people's friends and you don't want to immediately hop in and pick out china right um <laughs> so take your time that's the main message this week listen get to know don't do all the conversation you know take a deep breath if you're on a rebound maybe it's going to be a couple of, like there's two or three partners that are presenting themselves just take it one date at a time don't force it that's the main thing here for those that are retired a lot of what i uh, uh, i meant to say um not retired but like widowed um here's what i get here or a widower it's okay to just have fun and hang out i'm getting a much more social vibe here so single and happy but particularly for those that are out let's say divorcees it doesn't matter what age so if you're divorced or if your partner's passed because it can be either with the judgment card um what i get here is just having a lot of fun with friends enjoying the world maybe meeting some people maybe having someone that you're dating but it doesn't feel like it has to get any more serious than you want it to if you want it to it can but the main energy right now is movement of people in your life allowing new energies to present themselves and that's what i get on that and um, again for those that are just single and happy and not worried about anything uh, you can make a lot of progress right now on personal development career and and you can travel if you want to all of those energies are here and recognition which is one coin away from the eight of pentacles there so there's some good stuff that are that's coming through here okay destiny whale of a time um so making a splash is what i always see with this okay they overdid it with the alliteration and the rhyming on this your charge is to enlarge okay i take issue with that <laughs> let's just why not just say make a splash because that's what a whale does and it, we get it it's like it's the king of cups either a whale or a shark would be like the king of cups take a moment to really enjoy so if we look at the whale of the uh, a whale of a time in reverse king of cups in reverse having a difficult time just drinking it in celebrating being present this is what you're being asked to do this this week is just to kind of like chill a bit enjoy a bit let go of some stuff and open up for the abundance it wants to flow through don't be afraid to make that splash um I would have put a big whale tail or something like that, kind of like when they come up and do their thing. So um, this might be a moment where you're trying to hold back a little bit from being the star, star energy, just stepping into the spotlight. But if you've done all the work, it's also time to make a splash, okay? But have some fun. And that connects with the Three of Cups. Let's pull a... Um, a big idea card and then I'll just kind of look at actually I guess we can do three recalibrate rearrange rebirth whenever I have like a trip a triple sort of threat like that we'll do it that way okay recalibrate rearrange rebirth starting off with recalibration Recalibrating this sort of, and I like this one too, there's more than what meets the eye. This is the card of the grass is always greener. So stop focusing, stop comparing. That's your recalibration moment. We're going to keep these simple because there's three of them. Don't worry about what others expect, what others are doing, or what you thought you would be doing at this point, other than to kind of like ask yourself, do I want more? Am I happy? But don't let it be a kind of comparison thing. When you start to see what's there and what's available, the firmament kind of, it's almost like the wizard behind the curtains here, um, then you're going to see there's something much bigger, much more important than whatever you thought was important before. So that's the first one. Something that seems important isn't, and you can recalibrate its level of importance. Rearranging, we have the hermit in reverse. The hermit tends to spend a lot of time researching thinking contemplating and sometimes because we're thinking of um, what that's doing you can kind of get stuck in your thoughts so your thoughts get jumbled i would say on this one just know when enough is enough and decide the main thing here is you have the wisdom and the wherewithal to make this happen so just decide i'm good and that that will allow you now to also look at things from the perspective of possibilities when we talked about rearranging we also got messages here about taking pieces from before and just saying oh well this worked and this didn't why don't we try this just use your wisdom and experience to rearrange for the rebirthing card we have 
we're back to the beginning. Six of Pentacles, just a different one. This is going to help you either decide when to pull the trigger and say, let's, uh, it's like the TNT. You're pushing it and exploding it by choice or you're saying, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer than I'm gonna do this. It does feel like something's coming to a close though. The Six of Pentacles helps you decide when to make that happen. Um, but this is a good card overall because it says in this moment in time, in this week ahead, you have what it takes to carry through. You just have to say yes or no to certain things. So I'm gonna reiterate that it's important not to, you can't, you know, at the end of the day, you can't do everything for everyone. That is holding them back from being their own best version of themselves. So another answer to that thing is, if someone wants more, you can just say, no, you can handle this. You can do this. This is especially true for children that still want you to help them with their math homework. Say, no, I'll, I'll watch you and I'll answer questions, but you can do this. I've seen you solve the problem. Ask me questions. Talk it out but you've got this because it's like the mama bird. You're helping them spread their wings. So in the people in your life that won't accept, no, just say you're underestimating your own capacity to handle this. I've helped you a lot with this, but I know you can handle this. I'm not going to do it all this time. I can't, I'm tired. So save your energy. If they won't listen to that, just move on to something else. But the main thing with this is choices. You can't have it all, all the time. You can't do it all, all the time. And you can't make everybody happy all of the time. You have to pick and choose. And that's the single message. If we leave today, you have to pick and choose. If that's all you take from today, you're going to be fine. You're going to achieve a better balance. We have one more question, and I think it's the most fun, and we're going to do it right after the meditation. That'll be your final question. So if I didn't answer anything, I can't imagine that. But if I didn't answer anything, because we went through a lot today, think about that single specific question. Hold it to yourself. Don't type it into chat. After we meditate, I'll pull a card on that. Um, first things first. Again, if you like what you see here, do me a favor, a favor, like and subscribe. Also, you can give me a follow across social media if you would like to. Let's go ahead now and get ready for a meditation. For today's meditation, as I'm getting everything set up, let's look at the cards. What is coming through here? Um, I do like the rainbow, but we worked with that previously. Um, I might just take us to the moment after the supernova, or we'll go through a supernova because that's kind of what we're looking at here. So. Let's do that. Okay, so we're going to experience expansion, the expansive energy when a star goes to the next state. And we're going to, in this moment, okay, close our, close our eyes. We'll take it one step at a time. Just take a deep breath. What's in your head? Let it go. Scan your body. What are you holding on to? With this next breath, let that go. Okay, that's better. All right, for the next thing, I'd like you to basically focus on um, looking at something in the horizon. Okay, <laughs> my phone is piping up on this too. That's kind of funny. Um, I'd like you to focus on something on the horizon. Remember, I saw the ba and the ka in my dreams. So I'd like you to imagine a point on the horizon that you want to see happen. This could be connecting with a loved one. This could be accomplishing something that you have been working hard for. This can be just personal development, whatever it is that you want to create. See that on the horizon and know to yourself that it's just a matter of deciding I'm ready to make this happen. What you're going to do now is tune into your heart, tune into your mind, tune into all of your energy. And if there's anything that doesn't belong here in this moment in time, we're going to blast it out. We're also going to reach our um, energy toward that point in time of creation, of, of meeting that sort of opportunity and get a little closer. So blasting out all the stuff that doesn't need to be there and reaching out towards that opportunity. That's how we're going to approach the supernova. Take three deep breaths. And on the third one, um, you're going to meet that opportunity. First breath is about blasting out thoughts that you don't need. <sighs> Replacing them instead with I can, I will, I am. Second breath, releasing things in the body that are holding you back, tension, anxiety, th fears, emotions. Let's get those out of the physical body. And now almost imagining that you're like a fisherman, you're putting um, your kind of like you're, you're taking your obviously I don't fish, right? <laughs> but you're throwing your bait out there and, and you're kind of like putting the line towards that. And there's a hook. You're hooking onto that future you. And now as you're letting that line and that 
anchor and that hook go out there, just let go. That point is out there. You're good. Allow your breath, your energy, and your momentum to pull you towards that. Relax, enjoy, and then we'll look at the final card. See yourself at that destination that you set out. Again, repeating to yourself that you can, that you will, that you are ready for that option, that opportunity on the horizon. Slowly, take a deep breath. Focus your energy, your thoughts, and your intention on one last question. And let's take a look and see what spirit has to say. You've got this, folks. We have the Emperor card. As a yes or no, it's a yes. There's a couple key signals on this card, or symbols, I should say. We have the Ankh, and then we have a crystal ball. Um, Ankh, obviously, showing um, immortal life, power, energy, the potential to basically just say, I've got this. Um, this is very much connected to the Two of Wands. So keep the vision here and here, in your mind and in your heart. Trust in your capacity to do it and remember that you have earned this moment and really fight or stand behind whatever it is that you're creating and doing. This is about ownership, belief, power, control. So it's a very good affirmative energy. Yes, you've got this. Only challenge this week could be in a gatekeeper, parent or mentor coming through and either trying to reshape form or control something or asking you, if you believe in yourself, and this is where you stand up and say, no, I've got this actually. It's a new level of, it's not just boundaries, it's confidence and, and ownership. And that's basically what I get with that. All right, folks, thank you so much for allowing me to be here for your you know week ahead to plan. Like I said earlier, liking and subscribing helps quite a bit. Thank you for doing that. And uh, leave a comment when this goes on replay as well. You can follow me on all major social media platforms at my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh. And um, by the way, if you would like to go to my website, you can sign up for the newsletter. I will announce when the podcast comes out. Um, so there's a link on the website for the newsletter. I haven't put one out in forever because I've been focusing on putting out so many videos. But for things like this, news and announcements, I'd still have that list and I'll use it. Uh, if you'd like to give a little love and support, you can do it right here through Super Stickers, Super Chat, and also through memberships. And I always like to remind folks here, by the way, I don't offer private readings and I don't use direct messages. If you ever see someone doing anything like that, they are not for real. <laughs> um, so let's take a couple moments here and I wanna start off by welcoming the newest members, thanking those who gave back, and then we'll wrap up for today. All right, so let's look at the newest members or the ones that were gifted a membership. Um, Miss Tree, Rachel, um, Am, Hernan, West Manifest, and Trisha. Thanks guys. Welcome and welcome back to those of you that are joining again. Uh, let me see here if anybody was gifted or had a celebration of a, um, of a milestone. We'll look at that real quick. So looking through all of this, Raven, thank you for gifting a membership. Uh, let's see, who else? 28 months, Lorna Smith, thank you for your support. That's a long time and I appreciate it. Sarah Sunshine, thank you for gifting five memberships. Um, and I think that's everybody. So most of the memberships today were gifted ones, and I appreciate that. All right, let's take a moment now to celebrate those who have given back a little bit here with Super Stickers. All right, Super Stickers and Super Chat. Here's what we've got for today. Um, Jess, Color Me Happy, Lucy, Allison, Anne, Jeannie, 
um, Aja and Carmen. Thank you all for your generosity. I appreciate it and I wouldn't be here without you. Also, um, Color Me Happy, thank you for a 20th super on a live stream. That's pretty cool. Anne, um, thank you for your third super. And Aja, thank you for your fifth. It does tell me these fun things. And Annie Jacks, brand new here. Um, thank you for that first super. And it looks like we got another one here from La Lenina. Thank you. And Carmen. A few came through as I was uh, reading things. So I think I got everybody. If I missed anyone, I know that Dakota caught it. And I do see every comment when I do the... Um, putting in all the time codes by hand afterwards. So do give me some time to do that, but that'll come through a little bit later. So again, just some news and updates. Like I said, there will be an upcoming podcast released over the course of the next couple of weeks here. Um, and it'll either be, it'll probably be between the first and the eighth. It's just depending on music, RSS feeds, all these fun things that go into podcasts. So very soon. And I'm really excited about sharing with you the first uh, there's a nice guest and I'll put an announcement as we get a little bit closer to that. But like I said, um, sign up for my newsletter. Also, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel because you'll get a notification of that. Sometime over the next month or so, I'll be moving, still looking for a new place. There are some hiccups going on right now with construction and like air conditioning and plumbing and electric. So the schedule this week will be different. So for those of you that are like, why hasn't it posted it? I don't know which days I'll be doing it, probably Monday, and then it may be Tuesday or Wednesday that I get the other, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be one of those days. So just, I'm not going to announce the schedule, but know that by the first, all the signs will be out. And um, and I'm working with a lot of inconveniences here just because there's some upgrades and some stuff that's going on. So thank you for your patience. All right, everybody, take care of yourselves. Have a great week ahead, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.